Hi. Hi, good evening, everyone. This is Cooking Appa. Uh, I hope you all can hear me uh, clearly. Can you all tell, uh, leave your comment in the comment section telling me that whether or not you can hear Appa clearly or not? And also, uh, where are you from? Let Appa know where are you all from, okay? Just leave it at the comment section so that Appa can see all of you. Uh, we will give it a couple of minutes uh, for people to join. It's actually coming up right now. Actually, um, many people are affected by the recent uh, flash flood. Hi, good evening, uh, Rina. I think you are from Seremban, if I'm not wrong. Um, many people are affected by this particular flash flood today. So we might we may have slightly lower view, but for those who miss out, who those who miss out this particular session, it will be recorded uh, and uh, on my Facebook and also YouTube, uh, so that people can actually uh, view it right after this particular session. Okay. Hi, Claire from Singapore. Hello, hello, hello. We have another one from Singapore. Hi, Pauline. Judy is saying that she can hear clearly from Penang. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, do uh, do click like and also share this particular session to, to your friends on your Facebook or the Facebook groups that you are in, uh, especially for those who are interested to know more about vertical farming. Yeah. So tonight actually is actually a very, very interesting topic. It's actually one of the one of my most viral video for this for, for this year actually. It, it, on my on my YouTube itself, it actually reached out to almost more than six million people. So six million, and then so many people asking all kinds of questions. So it actually prompts me that why not I actually invite the founder uh, to uh, to this particular to this particular session and share a bit and answer some questions for those who are interested. Hi Ivy, you're from Seremban. Pauline say, I need a swimming trunk in case need to swim to market. Oh my God. <laughs> but seriously, this flash flood, this round is so, so, so serious. Uh, many people say it's actually one of the most serious one ever. It's really very sad. Hi, hi, hi. My friend is here from Singapore. Hi, Leonard. Hi, hi, hi. Oh. Vertical farming is selling very expensive here. Is it? Okay. Jane is from Klang. I hope your house is not affected by the flood. Please stay safe. Now, before we start today's session, uh, my heart really goes to uh, those who are affected by the flash floods. Not actually, not only in Malaysia. I I know many of my followers are also from Philippines, and many of them are also affected. So for that, uh, I'm appealing to my followers uh, to offer helps or any kinds whatsoever to the flood victims. Um, many people. Uh, I also donated a bit of money here and there to several different sources. Uh, some people also ask me uh, where can they donate the money to. Actually, there are so many platforms you can donate to. I think you got NST, you got the, the the Uncle Kentang Fund. So a lot of them. Just make sure you donate it to the right uh, channel, Okay. So we all want to uh, help them. Oh, we have. Um... Oh, Jane says you are safe. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. MC Wu from uh, Perth. Perth. Hi, hi, hello. Hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi, Appa. Good evening. I'm watching all your cooking video on YouTube and learn up a few dish of your cooking. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, by the way, uh, next Monday, next Monday night at... Uh, Next Monday night at 8 a.m., uh, 
uh, we APA actually has invited the celebrity chef, our chef team from Hungry Bacon, to actually come online to share some of the tricks and tips uh, on uh, in, inside a kitchen or how we can actually cook easier, faster, or even more efficient or improve our uh, cooking skill uh, easily. So uh, stay tuned, yeah? Stay tuned for next week's session for uh, chef team, yeah? Okay, so I think uh, please help to share out this particular session is, and I don't think we have a lot of uh, vertical farm session going on 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 on, uh, on on live. So do share it to your friends. Yeah. So anyway, um, before let me try to see. Sean, are you there? <laughs> oh, Sean is there. Let me bring up Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi. Hi. Okay, hi. Uh, say, hi, everyone. Yeah, say hi to all my uh, viewers today. Hello. <laughs> hi. So we have people from Malaysia. We have people from uh, Singapore also. Oops. My mic go oh, off, oh, sorry. And also we have people from Perth. Wow, okay. Uh, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, like I mentioned earlier, few a uh, few, uh, few months ago, Appa actually did mm -hmm. a video on uh, Sean's e-farm, vertical farm in uh, mm, Charax yeah. in Kuala Lumpur. And um, after the video was published, uh, it actually went viral to about 6 million people. Yeah, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Impression of over 6 million people to this particular uh, video. So alongside with it, uh, many people has all kind of uh, questions. But of course, the, uh, I think one of the most... Uh, most uh, frequent frequently asked question that people ask with regards to that particular video is that uh, mm -hmm. many want try try to do, try to replicate uh, or wanted to know how Sean actually did it. So this particular session tonight, we actually have uh, two main direction. One is uh, Sean is going to talk about his e farm, yeah, which is of course mm -hmm. a little bit more commercialized. Yeah, a little bit more commercialized. So, uh, and also uh, by using his knowledge, yeah, writing on his knowledge on vertical farm, I actually requested him to share a little bit on how probably you and me or any other people can do a small vertical farm at home. So, uh, so if our seafood is here tonight, uh, you all can uh, <laughs> definitely ask whatever questions that the. Uh, you want to know us now you got chance to ask directly to him so you don't have to leave a comment just uh in in, in my video so you can actually type in the comment section what are your questions you can ask directly to him and he i'm sure sean will try his best to share with you all okay uh so yeah. sean what how about i think we let's let's start with uh something you're you're a lot you're a lot more of your passion first which is your e -farm. I, mm -hmm. I went to your yes. e-farm. I went to your e-farm and it was really an eye-opener. At that point of time, I, I only heard about e-farm, but I'm, I can't really imagine how it looks like. So uh, why don't you tell us, uh, from, from your perspective, tell us about your e-farm. Okay, so e-farm is basically one of, uh, one of the companies that I started up in MCO. And it started out mostly from passion. Because I started this during MCO when we have a lot more time, especially the first MCO when our school is down because I'm still studying at that time. So our vertical farm was through, I would say, a few failures here and there through many years. And eventually we created like a, I would say, me and my partner, we discussed about an idea, we wanted to get away from a normal, normal graduate. So we wanted to do something fun. And what we ended up doing was one of my passion, which is the vertical farming. Where, But not only vertical farming, we want to focus on organic farming as well. Because anyone can do hydroponic, anyone can do chemical-based plants. Whereas I want my vertical farm to be not only leave a small carbon footprint, I would say a small carbon footprint to have healthy customers that likes healthy vegetables drop by to visit and cut vegetables anytime 
Yeah. And then most importantly is that a lot of sickness and stuff comes from the things we eat. So it's important for me personally that we eat like more cleaner. I would like to go into a more clean, cleaner movement, especially for fresh stuff where we put preservative and chemicals. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a saying that says uh, we are what we eat. We are what yes. we eat. So, so that Correct. is actually very important. Mm. And this is why Appa actually went to your farm because I have one mm. playlist. It's called Food Sauce where I actually go around visit people's farm to really to tell people, especially those living in the bigger cities on how a, 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 a farm is actually looks like a prawn farm, a, a fish prawn or a vertical farm. Uh, uh, by the way, just now you mentioned actually uh, one key word here. You actually mentioned the word organic. Now, mm. one thing that I, I learned after I, I shot the video, right? Uh, to me, I automatically associate vertical farm to organic veggie. So apparently I was wrong because after I published my video, there was a huge argument. I was, I'll use the word <laughs> argument. There was a huge argument on my video on YouTube that people are, are really arguing with each other and saying, no, 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 this is not, or, this is not organic mm -hmm. and what will only constitute as an organic. And then some actually say, no, 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 the, the kind of organic definition you are talking about is the, what, the, the organic uh, def definition in US, not in Malaysia. Uh, all kinds of argument. I'm not sure if you, 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 you actually noticed that particular uh, comment uh, mm -hmm. on there, but... Uh, I think that is probably something that probably you can uh, hi highlight to us. Actually, how how would you... I mean, as a layman, I would definitely look at uh, the moment when you are not using any chemical. To me, that is the definition of uh, organic veggie. So apparently, apparently, in real sense, it's not. Mm -hmm. la. So perhaps you want to give your comment on this. Okay. So like I said, for like you said, for laymen or for customers... That do not go so in depth into the research. Basically, to them, organic vegetable is to have no pesticide, to be yep. I would say no fertilizer, even fertilizer from organic sources such as compost or chicken waste. Whereas our system, we use fish waste. So it's very similar to the funny thing is even though we do vertical farming and using water and fish to farm, it's very similar to organic farming. Basically, just imagine chicken waste is replaced with our fish waste from our tilapia fish in our vertical farms. So from that, we will have special bacteria, whereas organic farms have their own bacteria, to break down the waste into nitrogen and other minerals, such as micronutrients like potassium, calcium, and that will just go through the plants through a medium. The medium could be the feces break down, the chicken feces or waste could be broken down and the minerals are in the dirt. Whereas for our system, our fish waste is broken down by bacteria and it goes into the water and the water transport the nutrients to the plants. I would say it's a more efficient system because water is much, much more easier to move around compared to dirt and it's cleaner as well. One of the reasons why we did vertical farming in the city or so because we wanted people to know where did the food come from. A lot of people... I would say for 60, for their whole life, they have never visited a farm. They will only know how to go to supermarket. Oh, vegetable, very nice. They don't know how it came from. They don't know where it came from. They don't even know what is inside and why is the vegetable outside looks so nice. Even though I would say it could be a few days old already. Hmm. One of the reasons is its lack of bacteria. Yeah, bacteria usually breaks down and rots vegetable. That is one of the main causes that why your vegetable turn yellow or spoil. So when you grow in a vertical farm, you limit a lot of bacteria because it has limited interactions, especially there's only maybe the person who's harvesting it, the person who's packing it, and it reach up to your doorstep already. Yeah. So actually you mentioned something very interesting that actually probably more than half of the sitting uh, city dwellers, huh? They have mm -hmm. never see, never gone to a farm before. Uh, for this part, Appa can actually uh, inform you all that um, Sean's, Sean's E Farm is actually located at Charats in Kuala Lumpur. So if any of you wanted to pay a visit, it's actually open for visitors. 
uh, they also they also open for the visitor to go and pluck the veggie themselves, right? Sean, correct yes. me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So so actually, uh, it's a very interesting. It's going to be some a very interesting experience where you all can bring your children to go and have a look. Uh, later, um, Sean is going to show us a video on what is his uh, farm it actually looks like. It's actually a 1,000 square feet greenhouse. You know, it's about 1,000, mm. if I remember correctly. Like, it's a 1,000 square feet greenhouse. Uh, and you're going to see, it's quite interesting with all kinds of different kinds of plants. You can go there, bring your kids there to look at it. Uh, tell them uh, this is vertical farming. Give them some education there and also get them to pluck hand pluck the veggie that you actually wanted. And it's very convenient. It's a very convenient location. If you are in KL or Slango, uh, it's at Cheras. Yeah, it's actually at Cheras. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, we will provide uh, you a virtual tour soon. Yeah. <laughs> virtual, <laughs> yeah, there will be a virtual tour right after this. Um, that is actually very interesting. So um, you want to tell how your, how your e-farm actually works? Okay. How it basically works is we have a few core components in e-farm. We firstly okay. we have our fish. Our fish is like fish. the workers at E Farm. Yes, so we have a fish tank. We have a fish. Our workers that eat and produce waste. So the waste will go to just imagine a filter system or like a factory, where they change the waste into nutrients. Mainly we are looking for nitrogen. They change it from ammonia, where the that's the fish waste. They change it into nitrite and nitrate. And this is basically nitrogen. The main component to for the plants to grow up is like humans must eat rice or carbohydrates to make sure they got energy. Yes, after this, after they go into the filter system, there will be a very strong pump that will pump the water throughout the entire system or the entire 1,000 square feet farm in the greenhouse where they transport the nutrients into each vertical tower where there is roughly 90 plants in one tower absorbing the nutrients from the water. The best thing is, we have no waste at e-farm. After the water passes through the plant's roots, the plants usually absorb all the harmful stuff from the water, providing fresh and clean water back to the fish. So it works in a one very close loop cycle. We don't put any fertilizer, we don't put any nutrients inside. So this, and we don't spray any pesticide at all because we are doing it in a greenhouse. So this is the entire process of e-farm. Right. So mm. it, uh, later, there will be a video. Yeah, there will be a video mm. to show you all this. But basically, it's first, uh, you need... Uh, but this is the commercial one. Uh, I, I, mm. I don't think... I, I don't, uh, later, when Sean will give you all some advice how you can do it at home, I don't think they will ask you to raise some <laughs> fish in your house. La, huh? <laughs> so, mm. so this one actually only works for his uh, more commercialized basis. So you, uh, they actually have to raise some fish, tilapia in this particular case. So they, after that, uh, when they will collect the tilapia's uh, droppings, yeah, the waste, and then they will, it will pump it into a, 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 a bacterial tank, right? And then the bacterial mm -hmm. tank is somehow going to break it into uh, ni nitrogen, is it? Yes. Yeah, correct. nitrogen. And then they will pump this mm -hmm. nitrogen up to the, all the plants. And so that's, that's how the whole circle goes. It's actually... Very, very interesting. Okay, anything more yeah. you want to share on your e-farm, uh, Sean? Oh, okay. So, a lot of people have misconception that like vertical farming, we usually, we use fish because uh, we have different viewpoints. But of course, for a smaller system, there is always something, uh, a different technique called hydroponic. Hydroponic, so hydro yes. Yes. Where they Yours use... is called aqua, is it called aquaponic or what, what kind of name is it? Yeah, aquaponics. Yeah, yours is aquaponic. Yeah, aquaponics. Is aquaponic. aquaponic, yeah. Yes, where we use fish as our main nutrient source for our plants. But for hydroponics, hydroponics is actually quite a good way to do it on a small scale because you do not need a filter, you do not need a fish tank, you just need a one very small place to hold the water. And right. hydroponics basically, this A and B solution, it's already concentrated form of nutrient in a bottle. And all you have to do is just put the right amount into the water, the plants will grow fantastic. All mm. right. So it's basically water and the nutrient. Yes. And a place so to hold the plants. That's all. And the place to hold the plant. So basically all these things can be quite easily uh, bought from online or? I would say it can be bought on Shopee, Lazada, 
basically oh, anywhere. Okay. When yeah, you search hydroponic solution, they will be everywhere. Hydroponic solution. So that is the mm. that is the nutrient that needed lah for. The, they just mm. add that in a, a certain portion of the hydroponic uh, solutions into the water. Is it? Yes, correct. Mm. You usually come behind the la- on the label. It will show you the instructions. Yeah, mm. but hydroponic is much. I would say it's easier compared to aquaponics because mm. you do not need to deal with like living fish and oh, yes. the. Yeah, a lot of things. When you have living fish, right, you have to make sure that water is clean, you have a filter, you have a pump, you need to provide oxygen. Yeah. So yeah, doing we, without the pump and the fil- hmm. filter, that itself is already safe uh, set out a lot of uh problems. But I'm sure hmm. there are some limitations also where you where when people want to do do a hydroponic at home. So what are, what hmm. could be some of the limitations that or challenges that people may face? I would say one of the first challenges is a lot of us do not have the DIY skills. Malaysia, oh, okay. uh, yeah, Malaysia, we do not a lot. So, we, one of the reasons why vertical farm is you have to make sure it has no leaks. That is one of the main, especially for DIY system. Having leaks around the system will slowly cause the nutrient to leak out. Yeah. And I'll say the second limitation, hmm, definitely, I would say the learning curve. To the learning curve. Yes, the learning So curve. they may because fail, lah. What you are trying to say? Yes, is. a few times. Yes, yeah, I <laughs> failed almost three to four times for over a few years before oh. I did e farm. Yeah, so people who is a lot of people always like purchase small vertical farms and stuff to play with it, and then okay. give up halfway because the vegetable does not grow as well. So a lot okay. of this takes experience and time. So take it slow. How long? Yeah. How long? I mean. After how long then only I will know whether I fail or not. <laughs> oh, usually when the plants are small, maybe after a month, the plants are very small. There's nothing to eat. The leaves are small and it's yellow. Or they straight up died halfway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very, it will be very obvious. They will turn yellow. They will wither re- like, re- 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 out. They will straight away die when they're in a seed form as well. Hmm. Sometimes nice. people think putting more nutrients will be better for the plants, but it's toxic. Actually, no. Yeah, no. Hmm. It's like it's humans. Like the, the, it's like they drown the drown the the, the veggie la, with with too Correct, much nutrient. Yeah. So yes. I'm sure I'm sure besides the besides the nutrient also they need to put their plants whereby it has got some natural lighting. Ah yes. We optimally for a small farm we should target to go for natural lighting, sunlight. Because okay. LED lights are a constant cost for a small system may not be worth it. And LED lights, yes, it produces heat and different LED lights have different wavelengths. So the more you go into LED lights, the more complicated you get. Mm. And see. sunlight is the best. It's free. All right. So put it mm. put it at your balcony. Uh. That would be yes. probably the easiest. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, well, if I put it at the balcony and sometimes we have some rain... Coming over, mm-hmm. will, will, I mean, some rains can be quite acidic also, right? Will yes. It affects the hydro hydroponic system. Usually, it won't unless you have like you collect a lot of rainwater into the system because the tap water is already pH seven, so a little bit of acidity doesn't really matter. It's fine, lah. It's mm, fine. Yes. We have a question here from Pauline. Uh, mm-hmm. Hi, Sean. Have you come up with a vertical farming solution for people living? In limited space, high rise. Uh, most people in Singapore live in flats and apartments. So having a fish pond to provide fertilizer is not feasible. Oh, actually, uh, you already answered this. Uh, mm-hmm. You probably don't want to rear any fish in your apartment. So <laughs> instead of in, instead of aquaponic, that what uh, which is what uh, Sean is actually currently doing using his e farm in a more commercial way. Uh, he actually recommend you all to go for hydro, hydroponic. Uh, mm, let me see. She has another question here. Do you feel hydroponic veggie does not taste as nice as soy grown? Okay, this is a good question. <laughs> this is a good question because this is split by a lot of people. Yes. Uh, 
this is really split by it's like a 50 50 war by people <laughs> yeah because certain vegetables from i would say cameron that is grown using hydroponic usually lettuces yeah it's i would say lettuce it does not taste as good as the soy but mm. it has its own benefit as well it may mm. not taste as good but it's crispier and juicier than soy grown lettuce yes oh. Ah, okay. so uh, that is oh, when you say it own. doesn't taste as good, what do you mean? <laughs> Basically, the sweetness of it. Ah, this is from okay. yeah. This is from a lot of because uh, usually I don't grow lettuce. I grow okay. mostly Asian greens like siu bak choy, and those are yep. doing very well in my system. But okay. I do have customers that ask me like, why does lettuces in the supermarket sometimes taste like nothing, or it's not as sweet as. I would say soy grown organic lettuces. That it all oh. comes down to micronutrients. Micronutrients provide the taste to the plants. And for example, our system, one thing we are doing differently is that we have uh, mineralization when we have special anaerobic bacteria that break down solids so that the water is very mineral rich. That's why our vegetable, you could say it tastes sweeter, better. Like, for example, our watercress, it has a longan taste to it. Very special. Must come and try. <laughs> yeah. One of our <laughs> best seller, the curly kale. I was, a lot of people say the cur- kale is 10 times the nutrients of any plants. But there's a big issue. The ones in the supermarket are very bitter. They are bitter and they have a very strong veggie taste. So no one ever likes to eat it, especially kids. But people who come to our farm and they get curly kale, the kids like it because it has a guava taste after it's a aftertaste. So you taste like a guava fruity taste at the end. So it all comes down to how much nutrients and what nutrients you have in the water. For us, we have fish, so everything is like more natural. It's like bacteria breaking down solids so that more natural minerals get into the system so the plants have a wide range of minerals absorbed but for hydroponics it's a little different because they do not have they i say that they're like feeding humans rice you can keep feeding me rice i may grow up big but i may not have other nutrients like vegetables and protein yeah so Mm. that's the difference between uh hydroponic and the normal organic soy organic soy um uh, veggie mm. la. but of course yeah. in your case yours is not hydroponic so your 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 nutrient is not it's not like the the, the mm-hmm. single direction nutrient from the hydroponic nutrient your nutrient actually not just come from the the nitrogen but it also come from some other uh bio uh, mi- micro uh, what uh, yeah my, our microbes breaks down the solids or waste yes and then it provides yes. a lot of natural minerals inside the waste yeah 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 so you, yours is actually has a lot more minerals as compared to the normal uh hydroponic ones now so probably Correct, that's the yeah. main reason why uh you actually taste different uh the from mm. from from others uh Definitely. i actually just now she was trying to ask me how 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 was it i personally tried uh sean's uh, e-farms veggie before very crispy, very fresh, and also uh, those uh, longan taste and uh, guava taste. Actually, I really <laughs> tasted it. <laughs> it's actually quite, it's actually quite, quite interesting when you really tr- you can taste that kind of thing. And I do agree with you. Many hmm. of the kale, many of the kale in the market is kind of bitter. Seriously, even though, <laughs> but of course, Chinese say bitter is good for you, lah. So, mm, mm, yes. So, yeah. So anything bitter is good for you. So I, I think that 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 mm. is actually quite okay. I'm sorry, my my mic drops again. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pick yeah. up my mic. Sorry, uh. Yeah. Uh, one of the I would say that because not a lot of people have access to organic vegetables, right? And not a lot of people know how like a lot of kids and even adults, they don't like to eat vegetable. Why? Because it has a very strong veggie taste. It tastes bitter. Or maybe it just tastes like nothing at all. You're like eating paper. This is one of the reasons mm-hmm. that commer- commercialization costs the agriculture. I, mm-hmm. I understand why they do it, but because of the pesticide and a lot of things, right? They may mm-hmm. grow the vegetable, but it loses all its benefits. 
And yeah. then it costs, yeah, even people don't want to eat vegetable an- anymore. Even though it's good for their health, they don't want to eat it because it tastes like nothing. Hmm. Whereas true. true vegetables, actually, they are very sweet, crispy. You are happy to eat it, yeah. Right, <laughs> okay. Uh, would, you, would you want to uh, share your... Oh, we have someone from Washington. <laughs> oh, wow, Washington. Okay. <laughs> you want to share your video and then you can also do a little bit of more things sure. there? Sure, no problem. Yeah, I can bring... Uh, yeah, let's show them a virtual tour since we are in the uh, COVID pandemic. So the best way to bring them onto a tour is the virtual tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. show... Let me show the video. Okay. Welcome to eFarm. My name is Sean and I'm going to bring you on a virtual tour of our entire farm. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. So, why is eFarm unique? Because E farm uses no fertilizer, no pesticide to grow vegetables as big as this and there's no animal or bug bites because we are growing in a greenhouse and our, usually our vegetables are sweeter and crunchier than any other vegetables outside So the newest addition in E farm is our Okinawa spinach It's from Japan and it's great for the immune system and it's graded super rare in E farm This is our common green dynasty bok choy our uncommon milky bok choy, our rare Japanese skyline, and then our legendary kale. So this is our ultra rare butterhead. We have some rare king choy sum, and we got some common Japanese choy sum. This big. Let's go check out our Mizuna. This is our super legendary Japanese Mizuna. So how do you eat this? Pluck it, eat it as a salad. Our farm is exactly 1,000 square feet and where we are standing right now is on top of the fish pond. It extends from the front to the back of the farm. How do we grow our vegetable without using any fertilizer at all? We use fish and only fish. Curious? Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm back and I'm going to explain how does eFarm work. So, eFarm uses a concept of aquaponics that fertilizer or synthetic pesticide at all. We only use fish and bacteria to grow our vegetables. How does it work? So, we feed our fish high quality fish pellets and any vegetable scraps from our farm where our fish will eat and consume and poop it out as ammonia. The ammonia will then be broken down by bacteria in our filter system into nitrite and then nitrate. Nitrate is a nitrogen compound that plants need to grow up with. So once we acquired NO3 nitrate, it will be pumped up all the way up into our towers and it will drop back down as like rainfall from the top to the bottom so that our plant's roots can absorb it all and grow healthily. Our plants that you see right now has not a single drop of chemical or synthetic fertilizer at all. This is our humidity and temperature checker. It helps us keep track of our humidity so that it's not too high and our temperature so that we know when to grow which vegetable in what season. I hope you enjoy the virtual tour during MCO 2.0 and for every purchase made in eFarm, you get free mint from our minty tree. <laughs> Oh yeah, we grow a lot of mint these days. <laughs> we grow because they grow they grow so easily, it's hard to not to grow them. I, I use a lot of mint recently because I when I make right? some uh, Penang curry, Penang Nyonya curry, mm. uh, they like to put a lot of mint inside the curry. <laughs> oh, I need to send you some then. Our mint is very, very, very strong. 
Oh, I see. Mm, yeah. I see. Wait, uh, mm. what is? Okay. So I have some comment here. What's that? Uh? Neem oil leaves an oily firm and does not always work. What is it? Uh? <laughs> ah, okay. Basically, neem oil is a form of, I would say, a natural way to deter and kill off pests that you do not want in a farm or on your plants. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm, it's one of the more natural ways. Hmm. It's a natural pesticide, lah. That's a, is that? Could say yeah, yeah. You could say yeah. Replacement, yeah. Uh, natural replacement for a pesticide. Is that? Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Right. Very interesting. So anyway, the farm is actually in uh, Cheras. Any of you want to pay a visit, and also you can go there and buy a, uh, buy buy some veggie from from there. Hey, oh yeah. Uh, actually, all his uh, all Sean's veggie is also available online. Uh, I did put oh, yeah. inside the inside the video description a mm. link to uh, Sean's e farm online where you can actually click on the link and you can make purchase of all his veggie. Uh, where do you actually send to? Is there a, a, a delivery area that you, you are covering? Oh, okay. Usually we do like next day delivery, so you order today and get it delivered tomorrow, and then we cover the whole of Klang Valley, like Putrajaya, Cyber Jaya, Klang. We also cover. Ravang also, yeah, we cover Ravang as well. Yeah. So basically, you cover the whole KL la, Clan Valley. Yeah, yeah the whole KL, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the whole Clan Clan Valley la. So those. Yeah. Uh, uh, do do you? It could be difficult for you to cover the whole Malaysia due to the, the freshness of the veggie, right? Oh, it actually depends on our how strong is our logistic system. If oh. we can do next day delivery with chiller trucks directly to other states. Definitely, yes, we can do that for the whole of Malaysia. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. So usually, after your veggie is being plucked, how long can it? How long can it last in our in our fridge? Ah, okay, okay. This is the one of the main benefits that people get vegetable from us. Our vegetable because we have we don't touch the ground, and our farm is the I would say the medium of growing is using cocoa peat, the type of coconut husk. So there is little to no bacteria on the vegetable. And when we pack it in, you can put it in a fridge up to five to seven days. Especially, yeah, five to seven days without it spoiling. Five to, se- five to seven days are inside the fridge. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and it remains fresh. Pretty long. That's yes. pretty long. There, yeah. there is a question here by Rina Wong. Do the nitrite water has any smell? Okay, the nitrite water does not have any smell because... The amount of nitrite inside the water is, I won't say it's minimal, but it's enough for the plants to grow. But it's not at the point that it has a smell because once the smell come start coming out, there should be at least like a toxic amount inside the water. I see, I see. Mm. Of course, you all control the amount of nitrite in, nitrite inside the water, lah. I'm sure. Yes, basically, we just feed less only. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so. You have anything else to share? Hmm, I know you've got I'll a few share. slides. Right? You want to share your slides or not? You yeah, sure. Little, I can go. Two, three slides here. You want yeah, to go they... through your slides? Sure. They, yeah, I saw someone that was in Singapore looking like how to do a small vertical farming. Yes. For us, we usually don't build for clients uh, or customers for smaller vertical farms because smaller farms is very troublesome for us to personally go there and set it up for you guys. So one of the examples is like the middle one, like our mini system. So the mini system is something we did more of as a hobby last time, where we have the you can have a fish tank at you can it can be a fish tank or it can be like a hydroponic. It's up to you. If it's gonna be fish, you just put the fish inside. If it's not, you're just gonna put like the A B solution or hydroponic. And we have four vertical towers to grow vegetable on. A simple setup, but. So, uh, the next slide should be, wait, uh, okay. So, one of our newest vertical towers, I would say, is this one. So, this is our version 3.0 Queen Towers. These towers, one of like, uh, especially people with limited space, they want to put on a balcony. It's uh, quite a big issue because balcony, you only get one-sided sunlight. So, the other side of the tower is going to be very, very small plants or the plants cannot grow at all. Yep. This tower, I would say, it solved the issue because it can be rotated. 
Yes, Ooh. there's a special mechanism. Yes. Uh, okay. So another test system or trial run of our towers is using this. We basically connected a bunch of aluminum pipes and we installed two LEDs just to try out only. And we put like a bottom here, we put like a small fish tank or just a small container that you can have a pump and water inside. And we have one vertical tower in the middle where you can rotate and grow a lot of vegetables year long, indoor or outdoor. It rotate by itself? Ah, uh? uh, yes. We have like a, it's something like a turbine. So the water you spray, the water you spray onto a turbine and it rotate itself slowly. Oh, do you actually mm. sell this system? Currently, no. We do sell the parts to do the system, but we don't sell the entire system. I see, I see. Mm, so, yeah. but this is, if someone were to, if someone were, to, were wanted to buy, buy the, this, this whole thing, they can, they can talk to you or they can, they can just go and find from, locate from Shopee or Lazada. For this, this is our newest, one of our newer towers. So we have not sold to, we have not sold on Shopee yet. So okay. we are still, this is usually for our more commercial farms because oh, okay. when you can do rotation, right, especially then our plants will be equally big. So still, we do sell them, but we don't sell them on Shopee or any platform yet. So mm. for so, those interested, maybe they can contact you directly. La. Yes, correct. Yeah. I see. Mm. Well, yeah. But of <laughs> course, uh, like you mentioned earlier, uh, because your, your, your site, you are not exactly... I mean, your core business is not really about selling all this equipment. Your core mm. business is more on your plants. It yes, is to grow, yeah. to, is to grow your, your, your plant. So, uh, so people may not, may not be able to get all the full, sub, uh, full sub technical support so, if, when they correct, buy from yeah. you, right? When it comes to this. Yes. So they may have to, to a certain extent, they may have to figure out certain things by themselves. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's very true. But the great thing is one of the reasons is it's, it's part of the fun. Yeah. Ah, okay. This, yeah. So, when I started doing vertical farming, it's all, I would say, passion. And one is the fun of solving an issue after okay. you have been, after you have killed your plants and your fish, then you've be, been able to solve the issue and finding reasons why the plants don't search up. It gives you like meaning to do it. Right, so it's yeah. it, it, it's more like a hobby more than anything else. Uh, more hobby and challenge, and yeah. also a business to you at the same time. Now, now that you made yeah. you mentioned about the fish, uh, I see yeah. many people commented on my video asking, "Hey, what about the fish? Uh, do you eat them right after it grow bigger?" <laughs> oh yes, this is the sad part of Ivan. We do harvest our fish. I oh, if you come to our farm now, we only have baby fish inside the fish tank. We oh. harvested ninety percent of the big fish out already. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. It's just that now we left you, the smaller fish. Mm -hmm. Did you sell to restaurant or what? Oh no, we usually we have one person who bought a lot of it, uh, uh -huh. retailer, and then we of course sell to our members as well, members, and we sell online. Because hmm, you mean you sell the fish through your your e farm also? Ah yes, we sell our fish through the e farm. Also, <laughs> How yeah. much you sell your fish for? <laughs> the fish was almost five hundred gram. It wasn't the biggest fish, uh, but. I think we only sold for like seven to eight ringgit. Oh, seven to eight ringgit. For, yeah, yeah. For five hundred gram. Actually, five hundred is a perfect size for a family of three to four person. Uh, mm. Anything too big is uh, no use. So five hundred five hundred gram is a very good size. I, I when I buy fish, also I will always try to find find something around five six hundred gram. Too big, mm, very difficult. Okay. You put inside the wall, also you cannot <laughs> cannot fit. Yes. Yeah. And hey, the good just just curious, that... huh? Talapia mm. usually has a lot of uh, many of the talapia has the muddy taste. Ah, okay, okay. Does does your talapia has the muddy taste or not? <laughs> I can confirm hundred percent don't have. Because oh. one <laughs> yes, I can guarantee you. Because one of the reason, <laughs> right? Our tilapia has never have contact with any dirt or soil in the system. Oh mm. yes. that's the reason. So yeah. when, when, when it has never contacted any soil, how can it be muddy taste, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. And one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like tilapia because they're grown in very dirty environments. Yeah. Yeah, so they eat, like, sometimes they eat even chicken poop or anything that people throw into the pond. Because tilapia is a very, very strong fish. They will not die. Yes. 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 But 
when they are in our system, we even feed them like mint leaves. Because, you know, we grow a lot of mint, yeah? So we give as a <laughs> snack, right? We give them back like mint leaf. You know how chicken, they like to eat seaweed, right? Our yes, fish yes, eat yes. mint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, mint tilapia. <laughs> yes, yes. Soon, soon coming out. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I think I have to get one or two uh, tilapia from you. La. <laughs> Can. Uh, we I still have like, I think 50 fish, which is like ready size to harvest. But they refuse uh. to let us catch them. <laughs> now, oh, very our, difficult to catch. Very difficult. Because it's the last few. Yeah, right? actually, These how do you all catch? One. Yeah, it's 1,000 square feet inside, you know. Mm, usually, how we do is we feed the fish and we throw the net, right? The whole big net into the fish pond and uh-huh. they scoop them all up. Uh-huh. Yeah, but uh-huh. eventually, a few fish gotten smart already. So, whenever they see the yeah, net, yeah, they yeah, run yeah. away first. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Let me catch and get you one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let me let uh let, let Appa pre-order one or two your of your okay. tarapia from you. You let me sure know when thing. it's ready, I'll go and get it from you. <laughs> okay, yeah. So the one more thing is that our water, right, is kept almost crystal clear water with our filtration system because we have like we have a I would say a vortex filter to yeah. bring out the bigger solid, then we have a bubble bit filter that is our bacteria bacteria housing then we one more very important is that we have a uv light to ensure there is no pathogen bacteria and viruses in the water yes that's how we keep our water crystal clear for our fish and for our vegetables as well mm. yeah yeah i've seen your water is really crystal clear very very yeah clean. very mm. very clean so this is one of the most important one uh. yes mm. yes yes Okay, anything else you want to add on now? It's almost like 45 minutes already. Time mm-hmm. flies very fast. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a few There's a few conversations. That's all one hour. <laughs> yeah, it's almost yeah. one hour already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. So anything else you want to add on? I would say that if people are willing to go into vertical farming, especially yes. like every household to have one, right? They yes. can actually taste the how real vegetable can taste. <laughs> Compact. Ha- yeah. I'm sorry, I got I got one very interesting question. Sean, oh. how can we buy your fish? <laughs> oh, okay. You can actually uh we are not selling it currently. There is still some fish inside. We're trying to catch them. But you can check out our website where we sell like our fish and our products there. Yeah, so yeah, when you order on the website, we just deliver to you next day with our own drivers. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But if you're in only when you are in Clang Valley, like, oh, yes, Clan Valley yes. so far no, right? Yeah, yeah. so far no. Mm. I'm sure I'm hardest. sure you will be mm. I'm sure you will be but I mean now you you have about one thousand square feet, like, probably just mm-hmm. enough for maybe not even enough to cater for Clang Valley alone. So uh, perhaps we... as you are as you are growing, mm-hmm. uh, you have any uh uh near future growing uh, uh plan? Definitely we have. We plan to expand as well. And yeah. one of the good things is that you're right, 1,000 square feet is nowhere close to enough to even yeah, support, la. I would say, in really right. only also not enough. Really. That's why. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So we are always looking for opportunities uh, yeah, to slowly expand yes. out, to grow more vegetable. As, like, our dream is always to, maybe maybe not in every taman, that is a little bit too hard for us, but Maybe in every area, like Subang, we have a farm there. PJ, we have a farm there. So your closest farm is like 10 minutes away. So on the weekends, you bring your family, your kids along, come and harvest your fresh vegetable that can last fresh well over a week and you come back next week again. Yeah. You probably can start thinking of uh, Hmm. franchising your business uh, uh, concept. Uh, If you do franchise, I think you Hmm. you can grow up to 500 farms in whole Malaysia within one year. No problem. Definitely. A lot of people uh, so, has been contacting yeah, us for this. Exactly, yeah, but, exactly. So mm. that is something that you can you can really put put on some serious thought. Maybe yes. some people will also want it to do it in Singapore. Huh, who knows? Oh <laughs> yes, we have people who want to do it in Singapore as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, actually. Yeah, over six million people see your video, or at least on my side. Mm. Uh, so uh, I think <laughs> many people will be very interested to see how they can also uh, right on these opportunities. I think I think mm. at the end of the day, what we all really wanted is we want to know what we what we are eating. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and we yeah. want to make sure whatever we eat is actually we try our best uh, to to as, yeah. as healthy or as clean 
as uh, as possible. So uh, if there isn't any more question, let me see. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. I have another question. Oh, yeah. Luckily, she asked. Do we have to make an appointment to visit your farm or just walk in? You can directly walk in. We are open every day from like 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So if I'm there some of the time. So if you're lucky, you can come meet me. I can bring you through a tour of the farm or my worker will be there. So you just tell him what vegetable is you want to harvest. He will harvest it for you. Hmm. Okay. Okay. If there isn't any other questions, uh, I think I will close today's session. I think it has been another very, very interesting session. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, Great catching up with you as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, uh, when I was when I was making uh, Sean's uh, first video, he was still a university student. Uh, and ah. just now he, he told me he just graduated. <laughs> right, yes. Just so you yeah, you can imagine you can imagine how uh how uh, capable is uh, today's younger generation. Uh, they are mm. they are really uh, going all out to do all kinds of uh, business ventures and I'm very very mm. proud of them and yeah, there is a lot of things that we can learn. Okay, so mm. um thank you very much for your time with okay. us today. Sure. So yes, thank you very uh, much. Uh, whoever wanted to know more about uh, Sean's mm. eFarm, I have put the link uh, for Sean's eFarms into the uh, inside the video description. You can go and uh, have a look. Okay? Yeah. You guys are so, all welcome to my farm. So just anytime, we are open 10 to 6. So just drop by and visit our farm. Right. So um, mm. I think most importantly now is everyone please stay safe. Huh? Oh, everyone yes, please. yes. I hope for everyone that has been affected for the flood. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, now it's not just the flood, but also the pandemic. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's not an easy time. It's not an easy time. Yes. Okay, everyone, stay okay. safe. Have a Thank good night. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.